Given this BST node class, let's see how we can make use of it. Let's now move on to the second class. And this class will be under the BST utilities class over here. Notice that the class is generic. And we're going, we're going to use the library class called ArrayList. And for your exercises, you want to think about what if I change the array list to be a primitive array versus maybe a singly linked list. That's something I want to write down right away for you. That's kind of the exercise you can definitely try to attempt. I think that will definitely help on your understanding. And as usual, discuss with me if you got any doubts about completing the exercises. All right, so this is array list, but the exercises you can think about over here will be exercises change to let's say primitive primitive array which will be BST note and primitive array number one and number two maybe it's simply just a, a link uh, a chain of li a singly link note singly link note of E these are two important alternative that you, you really want to consider. All right, let's now go back to the method itself. So what we have is we have an in-order traversal utility method given the root of some binary search tree. It's assumed to be binary search tree, right? So that's something very important. And of course, in the actual exam or the test, we'll make it clear about whether you can make such assumption. But for now, let's assume. Assume to be the root of some binary search tree. And of course, a binary search tree is just a binary tree satisfying the search property. And what do we return? Given such binary search tree, we want to return the linear ordering of the in-order traversal. So we want to perform the in-order traversal, and we want to return simply just an array list of BST nodes. And I will visualize that when we get to the test case. But for now, let's just see how the definition should be done. And that should be no surprising to you. Remember last week, we spoke about the in-order traversal. To be more precise, we spoke about pre-order versus post-order versus in-order. And we talked about the principle that you should really memorize about the visiting order. What about in-order traversal? The principle would be we have to recursively visit the left child. And we visit the root as a base case. And then we got to recursively visit again the right child over here. Right? You can see the actual working implementation really correspond to the principle. But let's now look a little bit more into the implementation detail. Here we say that the current root cannot be external. It must be internal, right? Meaning that if the, uh, for example, let's say, remember also last week we spoke about the difference between representing internal versus external nodes. If you only have a single external nodes over here, let's say, right? That's how we draw the external nodes. If you have an external node over here, which will be decided by, determined by, remember we got two utility methods over here in the BST node class, accessor methods, rather. So external uh, is external, is internal. Uh, these are the methods you want to make sure you understand why they are defined in this way, okay? And let's now go back. We are saying that if the current root is internal, then we're going to apply the principle of in-order traversal. But what if the root is uh, external? If the root is external, that means we simply uh, skip, we simply do nothing, okay? If we're, gonna, we're simply just gonna return uh, the default value for the result, which is null. It's really important to see that, All right? Let me just uh, write it down. If the root is internal, we'll continue with whatever this uh, enclosed inside the if branch. Otherwise, otherwise, root dot is external is actually true. Meaning that we're going to just return null. This makes sense because External node is not really meant to store anything meaningful. So if you try to do uh, an in-order traversal on an external node, you simply just return null. Okay. It's really important to see this uh, edge case. In order traversal returns null. 
And what if the node is actually not external, which is internal, meaning that it has, let's try to draw that, it has some internal node over here. It has maybe certain left child and also right child. Of course, the left and right child themselves may be external, but that's okay. At this level, we only worry about the root over here, the root. Let's try to visualize the case over here. So this will be the root. And this case, again, this case over here about external node is really for the else case, which is not really explicit over here, it's implicit. You will just return the default value of null. And if the root is actually internal, which can be visualized in this way, that's the internal node with the root, and then you got left and right. This will be the left, and this will be the right. And to really see the recursive nature, the left can be arbitrarily complicated, and also the right can also be arbitrarily complicated over here. And let's see the correspondence. So where can we see the recursive visit on the left child? That's exactly what you can see over here. We say that if the root dot get left dot is internal, if the left child over here happens to be, uh, if the left child over here happens to be Internal, in that case, you're going to uh, recursively visit the, the left subtree. And the way we do that is by calling in order traversal and then root that get left, right? It's really important for you to see that point over here. So that's really corresponding to the left subtree. And why do we have this part over here? It is because in order traversal is really a method that's going to return an array list. And you want to accumulate that recursive return. In that case, you're going to add all the return value from the recursive call into the result, which we are trying to accumulate. So this part over here is really about accumulating. This part over here is about accumulating, accumulates the return result from the left subtree. So this part over here is gonna tell you that in order to traverse the result from the left subtree, and then you're gonna add it to the result, which ultimately will be returned. And we do the sim uh, similar accumulation for the right subtree, which we'll see. Right, so the second step will be to visit the root after recursively visiting the left. So this will be the root. That one is actually straightforward. And what about and, oh, by the way, so for this one here, we just say result of add. It's only a single node we need to add, as opposed to add all. Notice the uh, subtle difference here as well. And what about a right subtree? It will be very symmetric to what we did before. So let's now try to highlight. So this will be the right subtree over here. I will put in orange. You want to check to see whether or not the root of the right subtree is internal. So that's why you will see this. If the root the get right, the right subtree has a internal root, in that case, you're going to recursively visit the right subtree. Over here, root that get right versus root that get left. And the return result from the order traversal is an array list, in which case we're gonna add all to the result to accumulate. So let me just write down more annotation and then we can move on to the JUnit test to see how to put everything together. So this will be accumulates the return result from RST. And when I say return result, I really meant the in order traversal we did on the left and the in order traversal we did on the right. Try to accumulate this into the result uh, first. First from the left and then the root and then from the right. So this really corresponds to the in order traversal that we spoke about conceptually last week. Alrighty, so that's about the in-order traversal and your exercise. Again, you can also try different things. Let me just uh, lay, that, uh, lay out maybe more exercises for you. Exercise number three will be to implement pre-order traversal. Number four will be post-order traversal. And of course, the coding itself wouldn't need so, much, so many changes, but you, you may just have to swap the line order. Uh, whenever necessary, but I think it will be a very nice exercise for you to complete as well. Of course, once you have done the extra utility methods in the BST utilities class, also try to write down some extra test cases to make sure the pre-order and also post-order also work uh, without any uh, errors. 
All right, let's now move on to the final fragment.